hi guys hope you're doing great our today's question is merge intervals given a collection of intervals merge all overlapping intervals so overlapping means like if there is 1 comma 3 which is the start and end of this interval 1 and 3 and 2 comma 6 then since 3 is more than 2 right 1 comma 6 interval can encompass 1 comma 3 and 2 comma 6 and hence they are overlapping intervals and so our answer contains 1 comma 6 right and then if you see 2 comma 6 and 8 comma 10 so 6 and 8 are not overlapping each other 6 is less than 8 so that is why we just add 8 comma 10 to the result and similarly 15 comma 18 is exclusive from 8 comma 10 and hence we also add 15 comma 18 to the result and if we see 1 comma 4 and 4 comma 5 so again they have an overlap at 4 and that is why 1 comma 5 can represent both these intervals so we merge them so this is the question and let's go to the set of approaches we can take to solve this So this is an unsorted array and that's why we also need to take into consideration that this example, though it portrays that the example is sorted, we always need to be sure to ask the interviewer if this is actually going to be sorted or unsorted. So that's a good learning from this question. Please have a look at these approaches. Pause the video for a moment, think and come back. Okay, so I think uh, merge intervals is an approach in specific on our slide where uh, we use this approach to handle questions of this sort where you want to find overlapping intervals, mutually exclusive intervals or, you, or we want to merge intervals for example in this case. So we have a clear winner here and the approach would be that first of all we need to sort them and we need to sort them on the basis of their start times right so uh, or the start points of these intervals so right now this example is already sorted by the start um, times of the intervals 1 2 8 and 15 so uh, it doesn't really make any difference here but that is how ideally it should look after sorting if it is unsorted and after sorting the intervals on on their start points we will insert them into another list, right? A, a link list maybe. Um, and what we'll do is we'll start the merging process. So as a part of that, we will check the last element in our link list, right? And compare the end time or the end point of that interval with the next interval that we are trying to insert, the start time of that next interval that we are trying to insert into the result link list, right? So, and there comes like two conditions. If it is less, right? So if the end of, if the end time of this interval is less than the start time of the one that we want to insert, then they are not mutually exclusive, just like six and eight here. So we can just go and add this one to the resultant link list. And if they are overlapping, then we just need to find out which is more, which of these two intervals has a bigger uh, end interval, um, sorry, end time, right? So for example, there could be a case where we have, let's say, 5, 16, right? That's one interval. And the other one is... 6 comma 7 okay so now they are sorted after sorting they would be placed in this order 5 and 6 because that's how uh, the start points of these intervals will be sorted and then if we see 16 is more than 6 right so if we just take this and write 5 comma 7 using the end point of this interval that would be wrong right so we need to find the max of the end points of both the intervals and use that so it will be max of 16 and 7 which will be 16 right so um, we'll take that case into consideration and then just finally convert our linked list into this integer 
2D area, right? Uh, the reason behind using linked list is that uh, it has a very handy get last method, right? Um, which we don't have in array list or some other um, collections that fit in our use here. So that's why we'll be using a linked list here. So let's get started and it will get better as we go. Okay, so in such questions, it's um, my personal opinion that we should always use a class to represent, uh, for example, an interval because um, providing it names it makes your approach to problem solving much more focused on the problem rather than thinking about which index should I be accessing here? It should be zero, one. So it creates a lot of, you know, um, confusion when you deep dive into the code and you're writing comparators and you're uh, iterating through, you know, those values. So I think if you have straight start and end values that you can just com compare and, you know, um, insert and update, it's always better. So it might be a little bit extra in terms of the lines of the code, but I think it's worth it. So let's just create a class interval. We just need a start and an end, okay? And yeah, we need a constructor. So it's simple, just basic. E, okay, and just assign them. Cool. So now our first target is to sort this, right? So we have to, before we do that, we have to first <clears throat> convert this into a linked list of interval objects. So what we do is, um, yeah, before that, our base condition. That is always the first thing that should come to our mind. So here there is no mention of this will, whether this will always have a certain number of um, arrays or will there always be a right answer to the question. So that's why we need to put in some base conditions here. So we'll just say that if this intervals does not have any array or has got just one interval in it, then we rather just return that same interval as the response, right? So that's what we'll be doing. Intervals dot length is less than equal to one, right? So you just return intervals itself. Cool. Now let's just, um, it will be an integer, okay? Let's just have it 10 and intervals. So we are trying to create a linked list, which we need to declare here, of interval objects, right? Interval. And let's just call it this, LL maybe, a new linked list. That's it. So, we just add here, just create this and oh, I'm so sorry, uh, new interval of temp of zero, right? That's the start and temp of one and that's the end, right? So we're just adding that to the linked list and now we have a linked list of interval objects. Our next target is to sort it, right? So we'll use collections.sort and overwrite the comparator method of collections.sort, right? So we want to sort LL, which is our linked list, and let's overwrite the comparator. So this will be dealing with interval objects, that's why it has this type. Okay. So we have to override the compare method, right? Compare method would have interval again. That's what the linked list stores. And since we want to want to sort this on the start time, so and in the ascending order of the start time, so what we do is just 
return a dot start minus b dot start as simple as that great now right so this is sorted now okay now we just create another linked list okay where, wherein we'll be so storing our merged intervals okay that that are overlapping and um, we will be traversing through you know um, the sorted linked list right uh, and just keep on seeing and verifying if you want to merge it or you just want to insert it by the way like we, just the way we thought we would so here we'll get an interval each time let's call it current okay and uh, we are traversing ll which is the sorted linked list okay so now here we need to check if you have no elements or no intervals present in result right so then we just have to add it so if this is empty correct or in what case do we just need to append that interval when they are not mutually overlapping or they are they're basically mutually exclusive so to check that we just have to see that result dot get last that is the last interval in the result linked list right so dot end right so for example it's two comma six this is there in result so six is our end if this is less than right if this is less than current so current interval is eight comma ten so current dot start that is eight right so if this is the case we just have to add it so we just do a result dot add current that's all okay otherwise we will update the end of the interval that's present in result okay so we want to see if we can for example here if 1 comma 3 is there and 2 is less than 3 then we just want to decide whether we should update 3 with 3 only or we should update it with 6 that is the max of the end of both right so what we'll do is get last dot end equals to max of current dot end right or the end it's of this particular interval itself that is get last dot end that's all okay so okay so once this is done um, we have our intervals what we'll just do is that quickly create a 2d array because that is how we need to provide the output so we'll just take the size of this okay and we'll always know that it will have two elements start and end and then we can just maybe take a count that's equal to zero and then take a four um, and we'll get an interval here right we are going to iterate through result linked list so we'll just get we'll just call it 10 and this is result and then what we do is that just take count of zero so this should be equal to oh, i'm so sorry uh, this should be equal to temp dot start correct because it's the zeroth position and this the element at one would be the end okay and we'll just increment count that's it
So once this is done, we just return this. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, that's taking longer than usual. Let's check if the internet is working. Okay, disconnect. Okay, sorry about that. Mm. Okay, it looks like it's connected and you should see a result. So um, let's try to refresh it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try to run this. Okay, cool. Yeah, it works. Let's try to submit it. Yeah, it works. So uh, the time complexity for this would be O of n log n because we're sorting it. And the space complexity would be O of n because we're using a linked list to store all of this, uh, you know, array elements into individual objects inside the linked list. So I really hope that this video helps you understand all the similar problems on merge intervals. And if it does, please like, share and subscribe. Keep coding and take care, guys.